What is the most kind or beautiful thing you have overheard about yourself by accident? Not me, but my daughter. We used to live next door to a couple that was a Tridge foster family, when law enforcement had to remove kids from a home. Theirs was on the short list of approved foster homes to place the kids in right away. My daughter was in elementary school at the time, and she would go out of her way to introduce herself to the kids and take time to play with them. Several groups of kids came and went before we moved to another state. Several months after we moved, we were in town visiting and bumped into the mom of one of my daughter's classmates. This mom is a child psychologist and she said, I just wanted you to know I work a lot with the kids in foster care. And I kept hearing different kids talk about their friend, daughter's name. I looked at these kids paperwork and saw they had been placed in a home next door to where you all lived. It dawned on me that they were talking about your daughter. Just so you know, she made a lot of difference in helping these kids recover from their trauma. Kiddo is a freshman in high school, now, and still looks to help others. Once at college I was hanging out with a couple of friends in an art class, and right after I left I heard one turn to the other and say he is such a nice guy, and the other girl replied with an enthusiastic I know. He really is people complimenting you behind your back is, in my opinion, the best form of compliment. Several weeks ago I overheard the technician of the neighboring lab telling some fellow grad students she knows so much, I am astonished. I'm still hyped up about it. I teach middle school, and I try to intentionally say something positive about a student when he she thinks I don't know they're nearby. The change in a kid's whole attitude is remarkable. Even kids who seem pretty self-confident get a boost, but the kids who are struggling, it really makes a huge difference. I worked in a call center for a while and we weren't meant to hang up first, the system saw calls where we hung up as fishy and would need to be reviewed, so they messed up our stats, and one day after setting a lady up with a cheaper than subscription, she didn't hang up properly and I heard her say, that lady was really lovely. I had to go away from the calls for a minute cause it made me really emotional. That job was tough so it was nice to see I wasn't becoming a dick. My wife's family said I was the rock in their family. Damn that's some serious praise. I was browsing my senior year yearbook years after I graduated. You know, reminiscing for a moment. I turned to the freshman section of the yearbook and I see writing on the side. It read, N1 Nguai, you don't know me, but thank you for being a role model for me. I see you at lunch sometimes name of student I believe I am a good person, but have never thought that others could consider me a role model, as I'm still young, and with no kids of my own, let alone when I was 17 in high school. At a party I overheard my sub bragging to the others about my pasta and my cooking in general, like they should be jealous he gets to eat my food regularly. It made me happy. I know he likes my cooking. But him telling others about it when I'm not in the room was a big confidence boost. My BF isn't the best cook, he can't improvise to improve recipes, or a place when there's something we can't eat don't like. He was charged with making porterhouse steaks for dinner last week. He asked what recipe, I told him it was up to him, I'd never made porterhouse before. He did so well I cannot wait to tell everyone. He not only look up recipes, but watched a video that told him to put a lot of seasoning on. And then he put the brown sugar bacon rub on the one side, all his own idea. He also broiled for the first time. Just amazing. I'm still so proud. I made my roommate try a little bit, I told my mom. I told the same roommate again the next day about how great it was. It made me so happy. Good job on your cooking. So happy your dude knows and appreciates it. I was visiting my old workplace after leaving a couple years prior. As I was walking away from an old employee, I overheard a new person ask who I was. She replied that's Guami, he is the reason I was able to become a manager, I am an hour manager by trade, that almost made me cry on the spot. Used to work in a call center up in Manchester. I have a very posh London voice which sticks out quite a lot up north. After a sale I take off my headset and hear one girl to another I really love his voice. Made me smile. 
I'm a journalist. When I was working a news internship at a local TV station, I was asked to go do some quick man on the street interviews on the other side of town. After we got back to the newsroom, I heard the camera guy, a veteran of like 30 years who's worked with some of the best reporters in my city, say to our executive producer, you know, that kid's a real journalist, gave me the biggest confidence boost ever as an intern. I'm now employed full time at that news outlet as of 4 days ago. When I taught second grade I caught girls passing a note in my class. I took the note from them and read it ems is pretty. Her hair is pretty her whole booty is pretty I was like, please don't pass any more notes in class but thank you and I'm keeping this forever. And kids don't lie either. I work at a preschool and was putting down one of my little guys for a nap. He rolls over and looks at me sleepily. Mr. LD. Yes. I love you. Love you too. Close your eyes buddy. He rolls over, but I'm thinking how much I enjoy this job. A few minutes later he rolls back over. Mr. LD. Yeah buddy. Crazy hair day was a long time ago. Why are you still doing it? I almost woke everyone else up with my laughter. This kid has some wonderful phrases. Another favorite. Miss, I can smell your germs. Oh, I took a shower today. Don't worry, they smell good. Edit, some have asked for a few more stories. The following is the same kid. I found him during center time playing with Play-Doh and looking at it under a magnifying glass stand. What are we up to over here? I'm looking at GAMs. This is the ugly moogly germ. Oh wow. What does the ugly moogly germ do Dr. Dart? I'm not a doctor. I'm a scientist. Oh okay. What does the ugly moogly germ do scientist Dart? It makes you crawl on the ceiling, and your eyeballs fall out and you die. Well, wow that's pretty bad how I take a piece and roll it into a pretzel shape. I believe he mistook it for a heart. Tell me about this germ. He looks at it with a furrowed brow. Oh this is the love germ. The love germ. That sounds nice, what does it do? It makes you fall in love forever, and never ever break up, and then you die. That doesn't sound half bad. TL. DR I'm one of two managers at a company. Our workers prefer to be on my crew rather than the other guy. Overheard them fighting to get a spot on my crew. Feels good bro 11 stroke 10. Long story my co-worker and I got our jobs at this company at the same time, went through training together, got qualified for certain tasks together and eventually both got management positions at the same time. He and I are good friends I'd say, and we cooperate and work together seamlessly when needed. But, our leadership methods are vastly different. After a lot of my own research I found a foundation of positive reinforcement is equally if not more effective than an iron fist type leadership so that's how I run my program for my crew. He's the exact opposite and is very open about trying to make his crew fear him. Both our methods get the job done, surely. But I try my best to make sure my crew doesn't dread coming to work. These guys and girls are the backbone of our operation and deserve respect. They're holding me up and making me look good with their accomplishments so I take care of them as best I can and always give words of encouragement. So much so that I have this little joke where I call out someone's name across the hangar and just point at them like good job bro and they get the message and laugh. Good vibes. Anyway our work schedules operate on a 3 month bidding rotation. Each mechanic will bid for which crew they want to be on which alternates weeks and those with the higher seniority in the company get the more desirable shifts. It boils down to choosing to be on my crew or my co-workers. Basically picking who your manager will be. Long story short I heard people were fighting to get on my crew. And overheard numerous times that my crew was much more preferred to be on. Just made me feel good that my efforts aren't in vain. I feel bad for my counterpart, but at the same time, a guilty part of me is like, yes. I worked really hard on creating an art project for my first grade class. I heard on students say to the other, this is the best project we've had all year. I was with two friends at a bar, 
one of whom I've known for half my life and one I met more recently. While I was at the bar ordering a drink, the newer friend said to the other, you know, my name, is such a great judge of character. I know that anyone who he calls a friend is someone I can always get along with, and then they spent like 5 minutes, long line at the bar, discussing all the things they like about me. I was existing and someone said, let's subscribe to that guy, 